why duos never last in hip hop anymore? And that I think that's a valid question. Like, why don't duos last? I feel like most times they just like find their own flow and just like I don't know that they gather their own kind of audience when that like they do features and stuff like that, and they just end up splitting. That's all. It doesn't always have to be like a bad thing. But some, some of them are bad, and I wonder if they, they probably don't talk about some of those. Each of these rap duos faced a different problem that led to their breakup, whether it was for something dumb or for something much more serious. Let's start by investigating what happened to Drake and Future. As their working relationship suddenly oh, took such a drastic one, turn that Future gathered two of his biggest ops to diss him on his new album. My name is Luesta, and this is why duos never last in hip hop anymore. As the world was going crazy over Kendrick's insane diss towards Drake and J. Cole on Metro Boomin and Future's new album, We Don't Trust You, everyone pointed out how Future was low key fake for doing this. For one, Future and Drake are known to have collaborated on many hits, such as Life Is Good, Where You At, and Used to This, which combined for nearly 2.5 billion views on YouTube alone. And over the course of their collab album, What a Time to Be Alive, and countless team ups on Wax over the years, they prove that it's a winning combination when the A and the 6 link up. However, it seems that after a decade of being on good terms, things have suddenly soured between them. And as usual, the fans are the ones that noticed first. While people think that they've been having a silent beef since the release of their hit song, Wait For You, such as Joe Budden. You don't think it's weird that nothing ever happened with that fucking hit smash song that Future and Drake made with Tim's? It was a hit. When you say, it was a hit. When you say what? No, it was a hit. It was a smash. So what you mean? Nothing happened with it. Never heard it again. That's weird. It don't come on. That's weird for you to have that smash. It don't come on. And both of y'all act like it don't exist. That's weird. Others believe the issues began when Future didn't even care to promote a smash album with 21 Savage titled Her Loss. Is it only me or have Future and Drake not been fucking with each other since Her Loss? Future didn't even post it and they haven't been spotted together ever since. Not even their usual random link ups. Over time, their theory that maybe Drake's decision to link up with 21 Savage had ruffled some feathers was explored by Nori from Drink Champs. As he said that the rumor has been going around the industry for a while. Oh, that's what I heard. I heard that's a big rumor that uh, Future um, is not too happy uh, uh, this Drake and 21 Savage album. And as because just, Future and Drake did an album before. And it Correct. makes Drake and Future album not as important, I, I would say. That's what he feels. And that's, I, I mean, this is, this is allegedly, this is all rumors. I've never heard it from Future's mouth, never heard it from Drake, never heard it from 21. But um, it's, a, it's a alleged big rumor that's, that's going on right now. With speculation all over the internet that the two weren't seeing eye to eye, Future's new collab album with fellow Drake hater Metro Boomin seemed to make it clear that he and Champagne Poppy were not on good terms anymore. On the album's title track, Future spit some lines. Sound. Um, it's a, it's a title oh, track. Amy. Future spit some line. It's just a video. Oh, he probably muted the uh, the audio for the song. Yeah, that's probably all it is. And uh, according to Genius, these lines may refer to rumors that Drake and Future had a feud over a girl. And although he's not explicitly naming names, the repeated use of dog could easily be a reference to Drake's last record for all the dogs. Besides, if he was still Drake's ally, he couldn't have let Kendrick, one of Drake's biggest enemies, Absolutely obliterate Drake on the song like that, bar after bar. I really don't know too much history between like Drake and Future. I didn't even know they were like really connected like that until like uh, this whole uh, like beef originated and stuff. I didn't know they were like linking up like that. I knew they like had like the little album and stuff like that, and you know like a few songs they did work together and stuff like that. I, I didn't think it was like that deep, but after like doing some research, you know, and getting to this point, it's just interesting to see how far it was like they they've all come. Like I, I didn't expect like it to impact them so much. This is interesting. It's always interesting to see this. Now, fans have dug up a ton of evidence pertaining to their beef, such as the fact that Drake's song, More M's, was easily a diss to Future. And I mean, just compare these title tracks from their last album. Through Drake and Future beefing, we can see that when it comes to rap duos, 
It sometimes takes one misunderstanding for everything to fall apart. However, when it comes to an iconic hip hop duo from Atlanta, the reason for their breakup simply stemmed from ego. With tracks like Lifestyle, Tap Out, and a whole lot more proving that they had incredible chemistry, the Birdman co-signed group known as Rich Gang had all the potential in the world. But after a successful run in 2013 through 2014, the two stars began to experience a lot of friction. At the outset of their careers, these two were basically inseparable, to the point that Thug even called Rich Homie Kwan his husband. And believe it or not, this is actually where their problems began. As due to Thug's feminine nature, Kwan was constantly asked about his sexuality in various interviews, which seemingly became annoying. Young Thug calls you hubby. Uh, on Instagram. Explain what that what, what that means, man. It's just a figure of speech, man. Take how you want to like. And it wouldn't be long before Thugger took offense and started sounding off about him during his live shows. Hey, Margaret Jones. Margaret Jones. Which prompted responses such as this from Quan during his shows. Their relationship just kept deteriorating since this very moment, as Quan clearly wasn't a fan of Thug's comments. My, my That's crazy, bro. The whole time, I thought these niggas were related, like, for real, bro, on G. Like, I, I thought they were related for real, but they're not. Like, they're not, they're not related, like, that whole husband shit, too. I mean, I thought that was weird for the family, you know what I'm saying? But I thought they were, like, cousins or some shit. Like, damn, they damn near looked alike, but I, I guess not. My, not my first reaction was, my brother called me on the phone, and I, I, I took my glasses off. Like, to be honest, not to get in my feelings, it hurt. After that, shots were traded back and forth, and while Thugger's career kept flourishing, Quan never really regained the same momentum he lost once the beef was kicked. So what happened between them? Well, for Quan, he's gone on interviews stating that their fallout had a lot to do with ego. Ego played a big role in it. Certain people, uh, include myself, certain people felt like they should go last, so certain people wanted more money, and mm. you know, I ain't gonna say too much, but right. it started falling apart around me. And that he never really thought the group was official. Like, I never looked at it like we were in a group. You know, I just looked at it, looked, looked at it like two uh, solo artists were going gang. collaborative music. Like, they literally always said, rich gang every time, bro. Like, what do, what do you... You didn't know you were in the group, bro? Like, you, you said it in your song, bro. Like, in multiple songs. Like, what do you mean, rich gang? Like, like bro, what you mean, bro? Like, Y'all gonna just be coming out here just capping, bro. Music working together. On the other hand, Young Thug claimed that the beef was 100% personal. Yeah, it's nothing Rich gang, it's, that's it's a thug of baby. personal, like, this was my brother. Yeah, it's just like... Now it's like, man, you probably can't never get the blessing of having me on the song, and I can never get the blessing of having you on the song again. However, some fans have speculated that there's a deeper reason for the two's untimely split. For one, Quan was known to have a working relationship with one of Young Thug's ops, YFN Lucci. In one incident that dates back to 2015, Thug supposedly played a part in a shooting that got Lucci's manager, Big Nut, killed. And according to this leaked audio that surfaced in 2023, Rich Homie was caught snitching on Young Thug, who is currently locked up as a result of the ongoing YSL Rico case, as he supposedly gave crucial evidence to the Fed about what happened during that time period with snitching viewed as a big no-no in the culture of hip-hop it's no wonder that kwan vehemently denied the rumors and essentially got off scot-free but one artist who couldn't escape the drama when it came to snitching on young thug is gonna in fact it was such a massive issue that it also destroyed his working relationship with another atl rapper despite the fact the duo were once close as brothers at one point in time these two artists from atl were both under thugger's wing while gunna was officially signed to thugger's label the ysl records leader was also Bro, paying little baby to rap in the studio and keep himself out of the streets. At this stage, Gunna essentially stepped in as a mentor and in Lil Baby's own words, helped him learn the craft of rhyming. And I started rapping. And he actually started like helping me, you know what I'm saying, rap. Like I didn't pay Gunna to write my song. When discussing his role in Lil Baby's career, Gunna said that he helped push him to go harder, critiqued his work, and gave him words of encouragement, which helped them develop a really close friendship with one another. Would you say Gunna's your closest friend in the industry? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I don't got no friends in the industry like that. 
Eventually, the two became regular guests on each other's projects, before eventually dropping their joint project titled Drip Harder, that really helped solidify both of them as major players in the game. From there, the two stayed on good terms, all the way up to the time that Gunna found himself behind bars as part of the YSL Rico case I discussed earlier. While his friends were in jail, Lil Baby expressed support for both Thugger and Gunna. However, Gunna would eventually do something that would churn a lot of his rap peers against him. December 14th, 2022 marks the day Gunna's life and career took a turn in a new direction. It was revealed that Gunna was released on an Alford plea, which allows a defendant to maintain their innocence, but acknowledge that pleading guilty is in their best interest. In other words, he basically snitched on Young Thug and said that his record label YSL was indeed a gang and not just a rap collective as everyone thought. When the news broke, the entire hip hop community was at Gunna's neck with the infamous clip of him saying yes ma'am to every allegation read to him becoming a widespread meme. Yes, YSL is a music label and a gang. Yes ma'am. While the internet was divided over if taking an Alford plea was considered as snitching, people like Takashi 69 who got blackballed from the entire music industry for the same accusation, were trying to convince the public that it was just that. The judge said YSL is a gang and a record label. YSL committed crimes in furtherance of the gang to whatever, whatever. Is that correct, Mr. Kitchens? What did he say? Yes, ma'am. You're not admitted to your crime. You just told the court that YSL's a gang. So now you, you uh, that, that six nine fucking quoting the fucking the video of the courtroom, bro. Like, man, not in twenty twenty four, bro. I don't, I don't even know when this when this was, but bro, this is insane. By the way, y'all see the new blonde six nine, bro? This shit, this shit kind of crazy, bro. What y'all think, bro? Leave a comment or something, bro. Uh, and then you're going crazy. Just fucked up your man's defense. Your man can say, listen, look how many records we sold. Look how many stadiums we sold out. And with that, his close friend and work associate, Lil Baby, was amongst the many rappers who immediately unfollowed him on Instagram. This is basically the modern way of ending a friendship. And it wasn't long before he started posting songs dissing his former friend. Then, during a performance of their hit song, Drip Too Hard at a show, Lil Baby prematurely cut the track, reminding the crowd that he thought Gunna was a rat. However, Gunna played the Uno reverse card. On the track Bread and Bunner from his comeback project, Gunna responded with some lyrics that claimed Baby was already working with a snitch, saying, you snitched on me when you know you in business with a rat. Which refers to Pierre Thomas, also known as P, who is the co-owner of Baby's label Quality Control and was caught cooperating in a murder case back in 2010. But whether he did it or not, it's clear that the damage is done and there's no coming back from it. In certain cases like Lil Baby and Gunna, the relationship has crumbled into pieces that not even a clearing of the air or a confrontation could sort things. But in the case of Cardi versus Uzi, their issues ran so deep that they literally had to squabble up for it. Across tracks like Lookin', Woke Up Like This, Shooter, Left Right, and a whole ton of unreleased gems like Bankroll and Throw It Up, Cardi and Uzi weren't just the leading lights of the so-called mumble rap era, but also a real dynamic duo that hip hop misses dearly. It's your boy, Playboy Card. At one stage, there were even claims that they would link up for a collab project titled 1629. And Cardi has spoken openly about just how many tracks they have in the vault that'll probably never see the light of day. Like how many records do y'all have together that we haven't heard that are just sitting on a hard drive somewhere? Like a hundred? A hundred? Yeah. Jesus. As early as 2017, we saw the first signs of discord when Uzi pulled out of a planned tour with Cardi because he had to, quote, focus. And although they kept things pretty much under wraps, that was the last we ever heard about the possibility of them releasing a project together. But as of 2019, things switched up, with Uzi opening up about his feelings on the increasingly elusive Cardi on Twitter. When a fan questioned the status of their relationship, Uzi simply tweeted that they were not on good terms, and went on to claim that he just took a different route and that it had nothing to do with beef. But Uzi would later reveal in 2020 that they had some real tensions that they had to deal with, before stating not long after that that they already linked up and fought each other. Over time, Uzi would continue to be the one who filled in the blanks in regards to their relationship, claiming that he tried to collaborate with Cardi multiple times, but couldn't find him, and was probably bitter about this considering he called Cardi's new track just meh shortly after. 
And as Cardi continues to grow increasingly isolated from the rest of hip hop in terms of sound, the possibility of them working together again looks increasingly slim. However, in a rare moment of vulnerability from Uzi, he's since admitted that he's a little jealous of Cardi in terms of how he found his own niche in hip hop. Cardi kind of like, he kind of like Cardi made that lane like, Yo, Cardi's so good at that shit, nobody else can do it. it. I'm being real, you get what I'm saying? Like, he closed it off, like, 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 that's that role, that's his personal role. In the case of Uzi and Cardi, it was clearly their own personal dynamic that was the problem. But sometimes, rap duos are torn apart by financial problems. And that's exactly what happened with Jay-Z Jay and Kanye. Kanye. Nowadays, it's absolutely crazy to think that these two went on a huge worldwide tour where they performed together every night. With explosive hit songs like Otis and In Paris, their collaborative multi-platinum selling album, and Watch the Paris. Throne, not only broke records and went quintuple platinum, but it also ushered in a whole new era of hip hop. However, soon after this record came out, things would start to go off the rails and any plans for a sequel would be nothing more than a distant memory. You can say that the relationship between Jay-Z and Kanye got a little weird after Ye embarrassed Taylor Swift on live television, writing for Jay-Z's wife Beyonce as if he was her husband. I'm really happy for you, I'm let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Kenny Ye was different. But in terms of what went wrong between the two of them, Ye feels as if their dynamic changed in 2014, when Jay-Z and Beyonce never showed up to his wedding when he got married to Kim Kardashian. But I was heard about them not coming to the wedding. I understand they was going through some things, but if it's family, you know, you're not gonna miss a wedding. To make matters worse, Kanye felt slighted once again when Hove never got in contact with him after Kim was robbed at gunpoint in Paris during a 2016 performance where he said, don't call me after the robbery and say, how are you feeling? You wanna know how I'm feeling? Come by my house. Bring the kids by the house, like we're brothers. Let's sit down. With nothing but silence from Jay-Z's end for nearly two years, Kanye began pursuing more strategic ways of getting Jay-Z's attention, and his next attempt finally prompted a response. After Kanye went on yet another 10 minute long rant during a show in Sacramento in November of 2016, Jay-Z and Beyonce were one of the many artists and celebrities he discussed. He first took aim at his wife Beyonce by claiming she was doing some shady stuff to him behind the scenes. Beyonce, I was hurt. Cause I heard that you said you wouldn't perform unless you won video of the year over me and over Hot Live Play. Before then telling Jay-Z to call him and talk to him like a man. Jay-Z called me, hey God, Jay-Z I know you got killers, please don't sit them at my head, just call me, talk to me like a man. Shortly after his performance, Ye was hospitalized for exhaustion and forced to cancel the remainder of his tour. But a year later, Jay-Z added a little bit of his own backstory to the feud on the track Kill Jay-Z from his 2017 project titled 444, which included these lines. You got hurt cause you did cool by Ye. You gave him 20 million without blinking. He gave you 20 minutes on stage. Fuck was he saying? To understand what these lyrics are referring to, let me explain. According to sources close to TMZ, the eight-figure payout that Jay-Z is referring to supposedly had to do with an advance that Jay-Z gave to Kanye to cover Yeezy's extravagant touring expenses for his St. Pablo tour in 2016, the same tour that Kanye was seen ranting about Jay-Z on stage. West also claims that he was owed $3 million from Tidal, as he originally acted as one of the co-owners of the service when Jay-Z took over. As the tension continued to escalate over the years, Hove revealed during the 444 rollout that he had enough and thought that Ye had let things get out of hand with some of his comments. Yo, the crazy part is, bro, I feel like he just businessman Kanye, bro. That's all he did. He said, all right, it's fucked me. And he just fucking slapped him with a whole bunch of business shit and legal things. And he's like, you know, I'm gonna start taking his funds and that's how I'm gonna hurt that nigga, bro. Like, that, that's, it's fucked up and that's, that's, that's cold as hell, bro. Especially that's your, that's your nigga, bro. That's, that's cold, bro. And Kanye probably didn't know what to do at the time. That's probably what he about to say or something, but I don't know, bro. That's that's just cold, bro. Really hurt me, my. You can't bring my kids into my my wife into it. Like mm -hmm. Kanye's See, my little brother. Person. He's talked about me a hundred times. He made a song called Big Brother. We've gotten past bigger issues, but you brought my family into it. Now that's a problem with me. He knows it's a problem because me and him would have been talked about. We'd have been resolved our issue. Cause you know that he crossed the line. I know him. He knows. He's, he's, he has. He knows. And only he has to know. I know he knows because we've never let this much space go between one of our uh, disagreements, and we've had many. It's part of who we are. But in 2020. 
they broke the internet when they joined forces again on Donda's jail. And to say that fans weren't excited to see them back on good terms would be an understatement. After personal issues and public bold statements tore them apart, Jay and Ye finally linked back up. But things aren't as they once were. Because even though Jay had recorded his verse, the reunion almost never happened because Ye once again felt like Hove wasn't there for him. Everybody in the stand here, I'm taking their verses off. So I'm taking Jay-Z verse off. I'm taking, is anybody who's not here on a portion of me? Is that on, on that on this verse? In response, Hove was replaced with the baby on the track Jail, and by the looks of it, that didn't do much to cement them back on solid ground, as when Ye released Vultures, Hove was nowhere to be seen. Uh, this is no more for uh, where the hell Hove is, but with, uh, with Kanye. But I feel like in the future, they're gonna find a way to like, I don't know, make amends with each other, and they're gonna like link back up and like, I don't know, make that, make that part two. You feel me? Like, we don't we go out niggas of Paris too, bro. You, you, you feel me? Like, I feel like we don't have some good ass music. We don't, we don't have something, bro. I'm not the biggest Jay Z fan, but like, that nigga with Kanye was, was always a good combo, bro. A lot, a lot of these duos are really good. If they ever linked up again, bro, it'd be good, a good song, bro. Good album, if anything. But I hope you guys enjoy, bro.